Good morning, everybody. Um, Jamie and I are so happy to be here with you today. And before we jump in, we're going to have Jeff launch a poll for us. So if you could launch that, Jeff, um, just let us know what is your position that you are serving right now? If you are a local officer, if you're a state officer, or if you're other, maybe you're just support, you're a past president that's not serving in a leadership capacity right now or whatever. And if you happen to be one of those people that maybe you're serving as your local president, as well as state, serving as maybe your state treasurer right now, then go ahead and click on local since this is the local session. And we'll see, um, give you a second to fill that out, see the room, who all is here in what capacity, because we do want both local and state officers on this local training. All right, 77% local. Yay. Stay and seven other. And I just want to say thank you to all the other for being here. We love our support. Our local networks and state networks love your support for being here. So we're going to dive right in. All right. I'm assuming y'all can all see that. Yep. Yes. All right, anything you wanna say, Jamie, before we dive right in? Welcome, let's do this. All right, let's do this. Good morning, everybody. And I want to remind you, this is the local network certification training. We do expect, as you see, to have some state officers here as well. Um, but state training will be Monday, February 22nd at 10 a.m. Central. If you registered for the training that was supposed to be two days ago on Wednesday, that link still works. Just remember that it's on Monday. If you haven't registered, Jeff will drop in the chat the link to register for the state training. You really only need to attend state training if you are a state officer. Um, and we are sorry we had to reschedule that, but unfortunately some of us didn't have electricity to be able to teach you. <laughs> All right, moving on. So if you wanna take a second, if you have two screens or um, if you wanna pull it up on your phone, if you go to the Women's Council website, wcr.org, you click on the button network tools and the little drop down menu, you can pull up network certification program and that's where the tools for this program will be. So if you want to print it out, it looks something like this. Um, and there is a draft of the local certification uh, program as well as the state certification program. So if you want to follow along, you can, you don't have to because it will be there for you. And we're going to show you all about it. So, in the past few years, we've reimagined Women's Council from the local network model to the state model and even our regional structure. Along the way, there have been numerous tools developed to help our leaders success. However, there's been one missing tool and you've been asking for this. Wallace Waddle says, it is essential to have good tools, but it's also essential that the tools should be used in the right way. This is why Jamie and I are here today to help you. We're gonna show you the who, what, when, why, where, but most importantly, the how your network can achieve certification, creating true value for your members. The Women's Council Network Certification Program is officially here. This first ever program recognizes and rewards the most active local and state networks <laughs> that achieve key five key benchmark areas of network excellence and that exceed basic model requirements while providing outstanding member service. We'll walk you through everything you need to know, be a pioneer and ensure that your network participates and ensure your network efforts are recognized this November on stage at our national meeting in San Diego. So first, the who. Who is eligible to apply? Well, every single network should apply, local and state. It will officially be the network president, your 2021 network president, that will be doing the application. However, that does not mean this is only their responsibility. There are things on the report, as we'll go through 
shortly that everyone has a responsibility to work on. And president elects, you need to be there for every step of this way. This is going to be your training ground. So that when you're president in 2022, you will know exactly how to run a successful network. And this is the roadmap to help you do it. So what are the benchmarks that we're talking about? There are five benchmarks to the local report. And the first one is member services. The second one is leadership development and engagement. The third one is administration and governance. The fourth one's communication. And then finally, we'll round it out with recruiting and retention. So you're probably asking when, yes, we realize it's February, we're talking about this now. And so you're going to want to start this right away. But the application period is actually August 1st of 2021 through October 1st of 2021. And our, we will recognize our networks at, a, at our national conference in San Diego. So I want to give you a reminder, if you print it out to the form, this is a great form that you can use print it out, set it beside your desk. And as you're doing these things on the report, jot it down. So when it's time to submit the report between October, August 1st and October 1st, that you can just simply transpose information from your paper form, or if you save it in your phone or however you wanna do it to the online form to make this easy for you. The last thing we want you to do is to be sitting trying to submit an application and having to go look for all this information that you could already have access to. And we'll give you tips along the way about doing that. The why. The certification program is tangible and practical. It'll make sure that your network is achieving certain benchmarks that deliver value to your members. Do you have a restaurant that you like? Okay, it's just down the street and sometimes the food is good, but maybe not always. The service is a toss up, so you never know what you're gonna get. And then there's a restaurant across town. It may even take you 30 minutes to get there, but it's your favorite. The food is consistently delicious. The service is superb, and it may even be a little more expensive. You will drive right past the closest restaurant to the restaurant across town because you know the experience you're going to have. Price and value are not necessarily the same thing. When you combine both excellence plus consistency, you create true exceptional value. And that's exactly who Women's Council is. And if that's not reason enough, here's more why. Participating in the certification will entitle you to the following benefits. Recognition at an award ceremony at our national conference in November. An electronic badge, acknowledgement on Women's Council's website as a certified network. Plus we'll have press releases that you can um, put on different media outlets. We recognize that we've rolled out the local network model with the assumption of live events. For the past year, we've transitioned into virtual, some hybrid, and even a handful of live events. Even with the various delivery options, you can still provide exceptional value to your members. The certification is a tangible and practical program, as I said. It'll make sure that you are, your network is achieving these benchmarks and make sure that you have true value to your members. Jamie, feel free to jump in anytime if you have any. Sure, I do wanna say something, Sylvia. So I saw something in the chat. So what is um, the documents that are on the website right now, those are draft versions, PDF draft versions. That is not the final version. However, not much is really gonna change on those documents, but those are there for you just to print out and see a template of what's going to be required on the final document. When we're ready to release um, the, the final, document. It's going to be an online submission form. So we just wanted you to be able to see what that's going to look like. So those are just PDFs on the website right now. And that's exactly what we're diving into right now. Um, your how, sorry, the where and the how. Um, networks will fill out an online application, as Jamie was just saying. And this serves as a self-assessment tool to determine whether your network is meeting and exceeding basic benchmarks that adhere to both the network model 
and a completion of tasks and achievements that meet and exceed our standards is recommended, and it's not even recommended, it's, it's highly suggested, and let me just tell you, do it now. You don't want to wait later. Um, that you start the process now so that you can meet all these benchmarks within the application period. So you have a seven month window to achieve these benchmarks. And as Jamie was saying, the, the PDF now, print, have it by your desk, however you want to do it, jot down your notes, and we're about to dive into the report so you'll understand why we're stressing that you should start this now and do this along the way. So of the five benchmarks, the first one is member services. And this benchmark ensures that local networks adhere to the network model standards. There are two questions for this, this one. 1A. One the network adheres to the model standards on industry events. As you know, you should be having four industry events a year. So on this blank, you will be entering the industry events held or to be held in 2021. And the reason I say to be held is when this is submitted on by October 1st, there will be a last quarter event that is probably not held yet. So you will have to tell us about um, links or anything that you will be able to provide showing what you have planned for that final quarter. Um, when you're submitting this, you'll include your topic of your event, the speaker, date, attendance numbers, and that is how you will submit the four industry events. Again, Jamie, jump in anytime because I can't see the chat if there are questions. Yeah, uh, uh, we're doing a good job. Okay, perfect. Second part of member services is that the network adheres to the model standards in regards to networking events. So you need to have two networking events. Um, and many times we know you have more. You will not have to submit all of them. Um, just let us know what you're doing. Again, um, a, a topic, if you have a topic, speaker, date, number of attendance, all of that. And if there is one in that final quarter, you will submit what will be happening in that final quarter. Leadership development is the second benchmark. And this benchmark ensures connectivity and engagement with other women's council entities, including national, state, and national liaisons. There are three parts to this one. Um, 2A, president attends a minimum of one of our national flagship meetings. You're probably asking, what does that mean? What are our flagship meetings? We actually have three this year that will count. If you're president, you are a 2021 local president and you attended the Elevate um, session just a few weeks ago, that is one of our flagship events. Another flagship event would be our mid-year meetings this May, which happened to be May 5th through 7th and then our national conference in San Diego in November. So any of those three will account will count for this. You will need to enter your president's name, which events were attended, and, and national will be verifying that. For 2B, the leadership team has attended an orientation in the first quarter of the year by um, March 31st. And this is a minimum of 50% governing board attendance. So let's break this one down a little bit because it could be a little confusing. Um, state networks, many of them, for example, I'm from Texas, they do a leadership training orientation for the local networks. And that's typically in October of the previous year. So in a, in a state such as Texas, if you attended an orientation, I know California does this too, and Florida and several other states. If you attended an orientation in the fall of 2020, then that will count, but you do need a minimum of 50% governing board attendance. If your state did not have a, an orientation or they have not had an orientation, they do have time to still do one, um, then the if they if they hold one that will count or the new year kickoff that we did for each of the regions in early January will count. We need 50% of your governing board attendance to complete that. So for that, you will just verify that you attended 
and who attended what they and what they attended. Um, I know that sounds very confusing and it's clear as mud because some of it happened in the fall of 2020 and you have through um, March 31st to attend an orientation. Um, but if you need any help with that, your state leaders can help with that. You can also request the video. If you miss the recording of the new year kickoff, you can request the, the video by emailing Jamie, um, Jay Saltman at WCR.org to complete that. And again, remember you need 50% of your governing board attendance. So your governing board is six members. Um, so you need at least three people to complete the orientation requirement to see. President-elect attends Network 360 in August. Let's be very clear about what this one is asking. This is asking for your 2022 president. That's going to be, you're currently serving as president-elect for 2021. So you are attending the 2022 Network 360 in August of 2021. So this is a future thing that is happening in, in August in about seven months. And you will enter the name, and of course, National will verify that. Um, no. Jamie, do we have any questions before we move on? Because I think there's probably questions on this slide. Yes, we do. All right, it's about orientation. So, orientation would that be our retreat? If you sometimes um, they are called a retreat. If it's a, a leadership orientation, it's a it, um, you want it to be um, where they are learning about what their responsibilities and roles are as a leader um, and all of that. I, I wish I could see the chat. Um, I know that, I believe California actually calls it a retreat, don't you, leadership retreat? Yeah. So, yeah. so technically, um, probably if you're calling it a retreat, it's the same thing. If you're just having a retreat and you're doing team building, like you're getting to know each other or you're just drinking wine, that is not an orientation. I'm, I'm not saying that you can't drink wine at an orientation. I'm just saying if you're having a, a sleepover or something like that, that's not technically an orientation. Okay, got another one for you from Sharon Eddings. Hi, Sharon. Um, this is referring to state orientation, not local orientation, correct? Correct. We are wanting the leadership teams, the local leadership teams attended something either from the state or national level. Okay. Um, our state held an orientation, but our board was in flux at the time and only two attended. As the local president, I held a two-day orientation retreat for our own network and five of the six attended that. Does that count? Okay, we want you to have the state training. So on that particular one, I would, if, there, if it was an online orientation um, where people could watch, you could have another, that third member watch the orientation or have them watch the New Year kickoff. Um, it's, it's not a very long program. It slips me how long that was. I, I want to say it was about an hour, um, maybe an hour and 15 minutes um, for them to watch and, and get a lot of updates of what's going on um, in the, at the national level. So um, I would definitely, it, it is about training your officers and making sure they understand their roles and responsibilities. And if you are in a state that has a state network, your state leaders will be able to help you fulfill this requirement. Um, if you are in a state without a state network, your national liaisons, which are Eileen for the East, Stacy for Central, and Sheila for the West, they will be able to help you fulfill this requirement too. Right. And I will put, somebody asked for my email, I'll put that in the chat. All right, perfect. Are we, are we good, Jamie? I think we are. All right. And if you have any questions, please jot them in chat. Jamie will is monitoring chat and um, we'll be trying to answer the questions as we go along. Before we complete today, we'll go back and look and make sure we've answered all of your questions also. And Jeff's doing a great job. He's 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 got them down. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. All right. The, the third area is governance. It's actually administration and governance. And this benchmark ensures operational excellence through administration to ensure network continue, the network continues annually. And this one actually has several things. So it's going to be several slides that we're showing, um, but we'll go by them one by one. 3A. The 2021 officers were formally reported to national by 3-1 of 21. 
Let me start off by saying these officers were due to national on October 31st of 2020. So you're actually, we are extending this deadline this year only. Let me make sure I state that, that if you have not submitted your officers to national, they need to be submitted by March 1st. That gives you roughly 10-ish days to get those submitted to national. Do not email national the officers' names. You need to go on to the JOT form. Jeff, could you drop that in chat? The JOT form to report your officers to national to fulfill this requirement. This is one of the easiest requirements to fulfill. So get that off your, off your plate today and get it done. 3B, again, similar to 3A, this is your affiliation agreement. It was also due um, last year. So let's get those in by March 1st. So your affiliation agreement, I will remind you, needs to be signed by your current 2021 president. If there's any confusion on that. Your local president, 2021, you need to sign the affiliation agreement. Um, that's a very easy form for you to sign and it's due by March 1st. Get it done today. So you already have two things done for the annual for this um, report right now. Um, 3C, your elections for 2022 are completed and your names are submitted to national by March, by not, sorry, not March, um, by October 31st. Morning. 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 So um, note that some states do have a different requirement for elections to be completed. I know California, for example, has a different deadline. So if your state has a different deadline, submit it by your state's deadline. But the ultimate drop dead deadline to submit names to national um, are, is October 31st of 2021. Now, let me clarify, this report is due on October 1st. So if you have elections on, say, October 15th, and you know that you'll have elections October 15th and you'll be submitting them on October 15th, that is what you will fill in in your report as you're doing this. You, you will submit the date that you anticipate submitting them. All right, 3D. Your network has your recent standing rules and they're posted for public display on the documents of your microsite. This is surprisingly one of the most challenging things. New leaders take over and they can't find the standing rules. So if your standing rules are on your website, it's very easy for you to know where your standing rules are. So you will just post a link to where your standing rules are on your website. And that is very easy for you to fulfill this requirement. Again, like we've said, we'll keep reiterating, many of these things can be done now. So you're not rushing at the last minute trying to do these things to complete your report. And Sylvia, can I say that National uh, has copies of everybody's bylaws, but we do not carry copies or save copies of your standing rules. So hopefully somewhere along the line, if you, you can find your standing rules if you don't have them already, but we and, do not keep them. And some states might actually have them. If you are a new leader and you, you don't have something, some states might actually have a copy of them. They may not be the most recent though. Um, so we'll move on. 3E, budget. Your budget for 2021 is submitted to your state liaison. Does everyone, I hope you all know who your state liaison is. Um, if you do not have a state network, um, then you will be submitting them to, or, or if you don't have a state liaison, um, you'll be submitting them by March 1st, everybody by March 1st. So it will either go to your state liaison or your national liaison if you don't have one. And this is your 2021 budget. Um, again, this is one of those caveats. It's this year only that you have that March 1st deadline. Um, in, the, in the future, it will not be a March 1st. It will be the, it'll be this year. You'll, you'll see that. I think on this report, um, I, think, I think that's one. In the future, it'll be a, a, a fall date because you want to have a budget before you start the year. But now that we're just releasing this report, we have a March 1st deadline to give you time to get that submitted to them. Many of you have already done this. And so this is an easy box to check. Um, if you've not, get it done today because you're, you're two months in and you're, you should be operating under a, ba a balanced budget. 3F. Network utilizes an electronic file share, share system. This is an easy way to pass information on so you have historical administration, administrative paperwork. So we just wanna know what are you using? Are you using a Google Drive? Are you using Dropbox? Are you using um, 
it, what is it? We don't care what it is, but just let us know what it is to make sure that you have a file share system. And so you will just briefly describe what is your file share system. 3H, network has officer positions filled and or replaces officers in a timely manner. Uh, we're interested in knowing we don't like it when you go without a president elect for six months because you need to be training someone so that they can take over the presidency. So working to fill those um, those vacant officer positions in a timely manner. So in this blank, if you have any, um, many networks don't have vacancies that happen. But if you do have a vacancy that it's filled in a timely manner and how long it took you to fill that and turn those new officers in to national. Is there any questions on this page, Jamie? Nope. Okay. Oh, so there was a question Jeff responded. Someone asked, do we have new bylaws coming out? And typically that's done in the spring. Um, Jeff's answer was, uh, we have proposed changes, um, uh, but your bylaws on your microsite should be 2020. Yes. All right, moving on to communications. It's our image and branding. This benchmark ensures that your network's image is consistent and meets the standards set forth by national. Um, we do have brand standards. And if you don't know those brand standards, Jamie or Jeff, could you drop that link in there um, for our brand standards? And it's, it's on using the, the logo and all of that. Um, this one has a couple of pages for us to go over on communications. So 4A, microsite training completed by officers who have admin privileges. You will probably remember we had two training dates in December. We had December 1st, December 8th, that we had training on how to use the microsite. If you miss that training and don't have admin privileges because you've missed that training, then you can get the on-demand training and it's available under network tools of wcr.org. For B, your microsite is used as the network's primary communication vehicle. And what we mean by that is you're uploading all of your events in there. We want to have a welcome message, a current welcome message. We know we have some presidents that are repeating from 2020 to 2021. We want that to have a 2021 message. You may be the same president, but update your message. Um, make sure it doesn't say I'm the 2020 president and so glad to have you and welcome to 2020. Um, you want this to be a personalized 2021 message. Include your current strategic partner logos and links, your events that are happening. Make sure your officers have photos in there and they have to physically update their profile on their own to have their um, photos there. And make sure your key network documents are there. Like we said, your bylaws, which should be there already and your standing rules um, that you will need to upload. Any questions on that on microsite, Jamie? Uh, nope. Okay. Jeff's answering, uh, answering them as they come up. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, 4C. Network has a minimum of one social media platform and you use it timely and it's brand compliant. Again, we don't care what you're using. Your social, your social media could be Facebook. It could be Twitter. It could be Instagram. Whatever it is, just use something to get the message out there about what's going on in your network. And different areas are going to have different um, social media that works for them. For one area, Twitter might be it. And for another area, it might be Facebook. So just make sure you're using something and it's brand compliant. And then you'll just post the link for this. You'll, you'll give us the link of what it is. 4D, your network utilizes systematized communication vehicles and an electronic registration platform. Um, so that what we're asking here is what are you using? Um, are, you for, are you using MailChimp? Are you doing email newsletters? Are you doing group emails? Um, are you using constant contact? What are you using? And then as well as, as far as your registration, are you using Eventbrite or do you have something else? This is almost a best practice. Tell us what the best thing is out there um, so we can share the word with everyone. And so you'll briefly describe your communication medium and the frequency. Are you sending out 
monthly things? Are you sending out quarterly things? What's going on and how you are communicating with your members? Just stop me if there's a question, Jamie. I do. I have a couple comments. So uh, Adam Tripp asked, how do they clarify what the dates were for when they submitted the officers and the affiliation agreement? Adam, it just uh, I don't believe we can give you an exact date. However, just put the date in that you believe an approximate when you submitted it. And that will, that should suffice for that, unless we can get him an exact date. Yeah, if you don't have an exact date, but you know you submitted it in October of 2020, then just put in October 2020. Um, I think that's it for now. Oh, Jeff says we have a record of each and every submission. But just put in your approximate date if you did in October. I, I wouldn't bombard um, National with those questions. Yes, if you if you did it in October, November, December, whatever whatever it was, give us an approximate date. Um, we know that this is an estimate because you're thinking maybe possibly several months ago. Um, but give us an approximate date if if you just submitted it or you're submitting it today. Put the actual date of today. And Rachel, the same thing with the, about the affiliation agreement. Just put an approximate date in. We're good. All right. The final part of communications, um, 4E, three officers regularly read the National Roadmap Newsletter and its contents. Um, you may not know this. We send, um, it's about weekly to bi-weekly um, roadmaps that come out and there are flash memos that come out also, um, but we know not only if you open it, but if you read it. So we are wanting to make sure that you have your officers getting these contents. This is great information. It's timely, relevant, and it's gonna help you run a successful network. So at least three of your officers are reading the national roadmap. And so we will be able to see if that's true, encourage your, mem your leaders to be reading that roadmap. And for F, the network has a program that recognizes the business leaders and their success slash achievements. So this could be anything. What are you doing to recognize when so-and-so wins Realtor of the Year from your state or um, anything of that nature? It could be any big, big award, little award, however you want to recognize success. But what are you doing to recognize success in your network? Are you doing a post on Facebook or are you sending out an email? What are you doing? Let us know how you're doing your shout outs um, and how often this happens. Is it is it a once a month? This is, hey, everything that's happening or how are you doing that? So just it's really giving us information of what you're doing to tout local success. All right, moving on to the final benchmark, recruitment and retention. This benchmark ensures that processes are put in place in order to recruit and retain members in order to have a viable network. It also assesses that the network has a specific strategy coupled with measurable activities that attract new members and keep existing ones. All right, there's five parts of this one. So we'll go by them one, we'll go over them one by one. 5A, network maintains a minimum of 30 realtor members during the months of June 1st through August 30th. So our summer months, you need to maintain a minimum of 30 realtor members. Um, best thing you can do is if you're not at 30 realtor members right now to get to that 30 members before um, June 1st so you can maintain them. If you're having to try and get 30 members, um, then you want to definitely be working on that right now. So for this blank, you'll enter the membership count um, during that time. 5B, network conducts recruitment and retention strategies. This is a more or less fill in the blank. Tell us what are you doing? How are you recruiting new members? What's your strategy? Are you doing um, a phone tree? Are you visiting offices if, if you're able to go in person somewhere? What are you doing? Let us know your best practice of what you're doing to recruit and retrain, retain members. 5C, give us an estimate. How many members did you recruit in 2021? The easiest way, and this is going to be through the date of submission. So if you 
if you knew you had X number of members on January 1 and you've got 15 new members or you think it's 15 new members, then you would just put 15 in the blank. It's an estimate and national will know the actual number. You don't need to call national and ask for the actual number. We want to know that you are keeping track of this. You're paying attention to who your new members are and reaching out to them. 5D, what's your member retention rate for 2021? Again, you don't have to call national and ask what the retention rate is. We want you to be on top of your membership and looking and seeing what your um, retention rate is. Again, it's an estimate. You may not have the exact percentage, but um, do start tracking that to see how many of your members are um, you are retaining. And then 5E, the local network has an onboarding system for new members. Tell us what you're doing. I see it on Facebook all the time. There are many local networks that they put a person's picture and they're like, welcome to our, welcome our new member, Jane Doe. We're so glad to have you. What are you doing? Are you doing a social media announcement? Are you doing a welcome email? Are you um, having a phone call asking them, hey, why did you join? What, what are you doing? Give us your best practices for that. Um, Jamie, do we have any questions on recruitment and retention? I'm sure I have we a couple statements, actually. Okay. So we encourage you to maybe create your own CRM and, and, and keep track of, of your membership, of your strategic partners. Understand that, that a national does not keep track of your strategic partners or uh, any local affiliate uh, partners that you might have. These are all within your own local network. So please make sure that you're keeping track uh, of your own partners. Uh, and it might be a good idea to create your own CRM or a list of, of your members and their contact information. Just, it's kind of something that we all do in our business anyway. So it may not be that difficult. Um, there was a question about, uh, and I'll read it verbatim, uh, Sylvia, and then I'll let you answer it. Yeah. It says from Lisa, Lisa, I can't see your full last name. So I apologize. So I'm understanding this correctly. If we don't hit, hit each and every one of these benchmarks in each category, then we aren't eligible for the certification, question mark? Yes, you need to, you need to hit all of these um, to achieve the certification. Um, and we are here to help you do that. Um, when we move on to the next slide, we're gonna tell you what you should be doing right now so that you can achieve that. And there will be strategies. If you are um, Lisa in a network with a, a state um, they will be able to help you do this. If not, your national liaison is going to help you because we want everyone to achieve this. Um, this is going to show that um, you are giving true member value out. Um, and so we, it is not our idea of creating the certification program so that it is unachievable. These are basic level benchmarks that we're trying to set out and um, make sure that our members are all getting the value they deserve. All right, Catherine has a question, Catherine. Hi, Catherine. I know uh, you're warm in Florida. So Catherine asks, is there a, a minimum retention rate required? There is not a minimum retention rate on um, the report. However, I will suggest that you do want to retain your members. It would be awful if you were having to recreate every year with um, recruiting new members. Um, so historically, um, most networks are probably about the 65% retention rate. Um, so you, you want to try to retain those members because if you're having to just keep recruiting every single year, that's a lot of work. The best thing to do is once you have a member to, um, get them on and on board and get them involved so that they stay a member. It's much, it's much harder if you have to keep recruiting new members. Right. Absolutely. And, and it's about keeping your, um, minimum realtor membership intact. So you want to recruit. However, you also want to retain your members the best you can. There's always going to be a turnover in membership. And we understand that. We all understand that. But you also need to be doing your best to try to retain your members, showing them value. And you're retaining them by showing them value in your presentations and your events. But you also want to recruit. So make sure that your, that your minimum realtor level is at least 20, 20 realtor members but we want you to think bigger than 20. How about 25 or 30? Don't just go 20 and I'm done. 
you've got to keep building your membership. So thank you for the questions on that, guys. All right, um, we will still have, we'll stay on for more questions too, but I wanna give you some things and you can um, take a picture of this if you want, um, jot them down, screenshot, however you wanna do it, but this is what you need to be doing right now. Because as I said, we want you to be successful at this. Um, so what do you need to do right now? You've got less than probably about 10 days to do some of these. Submit your officers to national. If you've already done it, check that box. That's, you're done. Um, sign and submit your affiliation agreement. Don't forget, this is an online form, both of these. You're, you're submitting your national officers and submitting your affiliation agreements that needs to be done by your president, that affiliation agreement. Um, submit your budget to either your national liaison or your state liaison. Have 50% of your governing board attend an orientation of some sort. We have a, a slew of ways that that can be accomplished, whether it was your, your state held an orientation, you attended the New Year kickoff, um, just make sure that you get 50% of your governing boards to attend an orientation. Complete the microsite training. You want to complete the microsite training anyways so that you have admin access to your microsite. Read the roadmap for network leadership. Do it now, but do it every time it comes out. Um, there's good information. I promise you that information is not information that you just need to blow off. Um, you want to be able to run a successful network and the roadmap is the roadmap to help you do that. Um, renew your members. Make sure your members are renewing and recruit, recruit, recruit. The more you do now, the less you'll have to do later because then you'll be maintaining the successful network. Um, and then plan and complete your first quarterly industry event by March 31st. And again, that's roughly, you've got about six weeks to do that. If you haven't started planning your first quarterly event, I encourage you, maybe try to do something joint with someone else. I know we have a lot of dynamic networks that are putting on dynamic industry events via Zoom. And so maybe if you need some training, you don't feel comfortable doing a, an industry event, you could pair up with another network. I know that we have volunteers in here that would love to pair up with you and help you become successful at your local network. So again, that's a March 31st deadline to do your first quarterly industry event. Um, with that, we're gonna answer any questions and I'm gonna stop sharing so we can actually see people's faces. So really quickly, guys, just, you know, everybody, so many people have been asking if we're going to uh, share the slides and Jeff has answered it a few times in the chat and, and it will be posted. But a reminder is just about every one of those slides was verbatim taken from the report, except for some of the artistic ones. But the slides were verbatim copy and pasted from the report onto the presentation. So it's all there for you. And, and we made this and designed this certification so that it is all the benchmarks and all of the pieces that you're following in the local network model. So we didn't make anything very difficult. It's just stuff that you should be doing anyway with the local model. So questions, I see questions coming in. Yeah, I see a few questions in here um, and I don't know which which ones Jeff has answered because it's it's moving too fast for me to um, pay attention. So I'm just gonna try and answer some, Jamie, if you see some um, that need to be answered. Um, are the recordings for the recruiting and retention sessions um, available? Yes, they are. They are on our YouTube channel. I highly suggest you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that when new things are posted, you get updated because these are great information sessions. And um, some of them you don't even have to watch you can listen if you're like going for a run or a walk or something, you can just listen to and get the content. That and I think those recordings were on the latest roadmap as well, weren't they, Jeff? The links for those recordings for the recruitment and retention recordings? Uh, yes, they were. They were in the most recent uh, couple of editions ago in roadmap. So um, uh, visit the archives and we've got all of it recorded. We also recorded some from Elevate as well, some real good uh, lightning round sessions. Good, thank you. Okay. Um, yes, you will receive credit um, for attending via the recordings. Um, if you watch the recording, you will get credit for 
um, attending that. And this is being recorded. So if maybe you're a state officer or a local something and your president needs to watch they could, because they couldn't be here, this session has been recorded. Um, and you can literally watch this session as we're going item by item and when you're filling out your online report. Um, and Rachel has a question. She got here a little late, so she apologizes from the beginning. Will the network certification report be emailed to presidents? The one to use as a working document currently to track our progress against these benchmarks. So can we tell her how to access the document again? Yes, absolutely. You can um, access the document. I'm sure there will be a, um, a link in, in a future roadmap with this recording, with the, the page on the website. But if you go to um, the website, the far right tab, um, network tools, and then you go to local certificate or you go to network certification page, it's going to have everything there. The recordings will be there um, as well as this um, PDF version of the report. I, if you missed it, I highly suggest printing it out as you do something, jot down like we, we talked about the dates of when you submitted your officers. If you're submitting them today, write down today's date. So when you go to actually fill out this online report, you're just basically transcribing what you have written on paper onto an online form and you're not having to hunt and go look at what when you thought you did something. Jeff, can you post that link again in the chat? I know that you've posted it a couple times. Sure. Uh, which one, the recording? The No, the document, the, the certification document. Sure thing. Sending now. Thank you. Uh, will our members receive credit for attending via the recordings? Yes. Yes. If you watch a recording, then that, that will, um, that will count for credit. Um, trying to. Thank you, Jeff. The, I did see a question in here. Now I can't find it about membership. Um, we are wanting you, I, I just want to let you all know, because many people don't know this. If you are trying to charter a new network, you must have 35 realtor members. And so the standard of maintaining 20, many of you wouldn't even be able to create a new network at this point. So we are encouraging you to grow your network. We understand that you might have um, a small network, but we do want to grow in value and grow in numbers. Um, so just try to work on achieving that. And those um, two sessions of the recruiting and retention that our national liaisons did were phenomenal. So I highly suggest you watch them because you're going to, you're going to get tons of ideas of how to recruit and retain your members. Okay. We have two questions, pretty similar. If watching a video, how is that being tracked for members to get credit? Number one, we trust you not to lie to us. Um, I think that's first and foremost, we trust you not to lie to us um, who watched it and who didn't. But for example, if you try to claim that you and um, all of your officers watch the microsite training, and yet you email, email national every other week because you don't know how to do something basic like access the um, microsite, we know that you didn't do that. Um, so uh, we're going to do, we're going to do the honor system here, but there are ways for us to tell if you truly did not do it. And the email system that we have, we do have the ability to track if you, um, if you open an email and read it, it's connected to a, a member profile. Okay. Carrie wants to know, have we met our requirements if we sent national an annual report? Okay, um, Carrie, in the past we had annual reports that had to be sent. We do not have an annual report. This is replacing all reporting of that nature, um, the certification program. And um, so if you submitted something, it was not necessary for you to, to do that. Um, and there is not an annual report. If there were an annual report, then it's the certification. Oh my gosh, no more questions. I'm sure there's some some other questions. Um, did, did we make it simple, you guys? Shake your head, yes, yes. It's super simple. We want it to be. We don't want it to be, you know, time consuming. These are things you're already doing. 